So there is this new hyped thing out there, Deno. Deno is in the end a JavaScript runtime, just like Node.js is, and Deno actually was created by the same person, Ryan Dahl, as Node.js was. Deno is there to fix some of Node.js flaws. And in this video, we're going to find out which flaws and fixes that are, how Deno works, and if you should already switch to Deno. So there is this new thing called Deno. And Deno is basically just an anagram for Node. Node as in Node.js. And indeed, Deno as we can see here on their official page, deno.land, is a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. If we have a look at node.js.org, we see that's not too far away from what we find there. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. And indeed, Deno in the end is a new JavaScript runtime developed by the inventor of Node.js, Ryan Dahl. Now, below the video, you'll find a couple of talks by him, which you can find on YouTube, where he basically announces Deno and shares his thoughts about Deno and why he had the feeling that there was a need for Deno. But in the end, Deno is, you could say, a replacement for Node.js, but not replacement in the sense of you should replace Node.js with it, but instead you could look into Deno because it might be able to do the same thing in a better way. However, and that's a big, huge disclaimer here. Deno, at the point of time I'm recording this, and at the point of time these talks were given, is in very, very early stages. I'm recording this video to a point of time where presumably we're only a few days away from version 1.0 being released, though 1.0 will not be the final destination, the end of Deno where everything is finished, instead it's just the, the first, a bit more final version of it, you could say. Now also, Deno is quite popular, it managed to collect quite a few GitHub stars, if you take this as a measure for popularity. But of course it is worth noting and keeping in mind that Node.js is getting used by a lot of huge companies out there, that there are tons of projects and websites and packages built with Node.js, and that it's quite a mature and developed runtime. So it's not brand new and full of bugs, instead this is production ready and getting used a lot. And therefore, I want to make this very clear, Node.js is not going to go anywhere. But of course, you don't have to take this from me, you can take it from Ryan himself. But what's the hype about Deno then? What is it? How does it work? Well, for that, let's just install it using one of these techniques. I'm going to use this first option here. You can find more options here if you click on Deno install in case these two options do not work for you or are not options for you, for example, on Windows. I'm running this here in my terminal. This will basically download the Deno executable, if you want to call it like this, install it on my system. And if you haven't installed it already, which I have to admit I already did before I started recording this, it will also give you some instructions here right after it finished in the terminal on how to update your path or your profile files to make sure you can run the deno command from anywhere on your device. Now once you did install deno, you can run the deno command like this and you get this interactive REPL where you for example can add numbers together. Now that's quite similar to Node where you also can get this REPL. But of course deno is more than just a REPL, we can use deno to execute code, just as we can use Node to execute code. And with Node.js, this here is some code we could write. We use the HTTP module, which is part of Node.js. We create a server, we start listening to some port and we're good to go. We can wait for incoming requests. And if I run this file here to start my script and I visit localhost 3000, I see my response here because that's what I'm sending here. So that's Node.js as we know it and love it. Now we also, of course, often use Node.js with, for example, Express or with other third-party packages in general. 
In that case, we install the package with npm install. We get the package.json file, which manages our dependencies. And our code then might look something like this here. It's basically the same app with a different response text, now using the express package. And therefore, of course, I can run this code as well. And if we now reload here, we see my response with express. So that's all nice, but also not too fancy. How would this look like with Deno and what are the differences between Deno and Node.js then? Let me create a new folder, Deno, and in there my Deno.ts file. And that's the first difference. Deno, out of the box, does not only support JavaScript, which you still can use, but it also supports TypeScript without the need of manual compilation. Instead, the compiler is built into Deno. Therefore, if we wanted to, in Deno world, I could write this code here and just execute it like this. All we need to do is go into our directory here, oops, into the Deno directory, and then simply run Deno, run Deno.ts. And what you see is that it compiles my code and then prints this works. Now, this is of course not a web server, just a little script, but it proves that Deno supports TypeScript. And that's one huge difference compared to Node.js. So this is a first difference, but not the only one. Let's see how we could spin up a simple web server. For this, we first of all, just like in vanilla Node, need to import a package that helps us with basically creating a web server. Now in Deno, we use ES modules. So we don't use common JS, we don't use the node module system like this. Instead, we write code which might look familiar if you worked with browser side JavaScript, if you worked with modern JavaScript projects where you, for example, build React apps, or even just with vanilla JavaScript where you use ES modules. You can import something from somewhere. And now that's the next important thing. With Deno, you don't import something from a magical HTTP module, and you also don't need to npm install anything to then import from the node modules folder. Instead with Deno, you import from a web server. You import from a URL. For example, from HTTPS, deno.land, and then here, for example, standard for the standard library, which is basically a core part of Deno, a core set of features, made available to Deno, you could say, by the Deno developers from a specific version here, and then from HTTP server.ts. And that's simply this example here. So you can also just copy this import link. This imports serve from this URL. So no need for npm install or anything like that. And we can then create our server here by calling serve and passing in an object to configure that server. Essentially here, I'll just set port 8000, for example. And thereafter, we get another set of new features. Deno embraces modern JavaScript features like promises or async iterables. Now, that's a feature you actually might have never seen before. It's essentially a for loop that allows you to go through an infinite array, you could say, an infinite array of incoming data and events. It looks like this. Here, for example, we go through an infinite flow of incoming requests from our server. And this works by adding a wait here in front of our for loop content here. Now that's another feature available in Deno. We can use top level await. Now actually my IDE doesn't like this. It thinks that await is only possible in an async function or an async generator. But Deno, when you execute this code with Deno, actually does allow top level await not just when you use it with an async iterable, but also on plain vanilla promises. That's another cool feature. You don't need to wrap anything where you want to use await with a needless async function that is only there to enable await. So here we're basically going through this async iterable, which is this infinite array of incoming events, of incoming data. And it will basically keep on looping until the source of data, the server in this case, says, I'm done. No more data will be sent, which here, of course, will never happen. And in here, we can therefore, for example, print incoming request and also use the request object to respond, whoops, respond like this. 
with an object where we, for example, set the body to message from Deno. And this code looks very strange if you are used to Node.js, but this is basically the Deno equivalent to this code here. And actually, I'll therefore also use the same port, 3000, to have exactly the same. Now you'll see another difference if we try to run this. If I now run Deno TS here again, you see it compiles, it now downloads whatever is stored in this URL, whatever we're importing, and it caches it locally so that it doesn't need to re-download this whenever you're rerunning this script. So that's basically your npm install replacement without all the disadvantages of npm install, like a huge node modules folder. But you'll also see that I, of course, got an error here, an uncaught permission denied error, because that's another feature that's advertised here. It's a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. In Node.js, any script is able to spin up a web server or to work with your file system. And there's little you can do about that. Now, if you're writing your own node code, which you run on your own machine, that's not necessarily a problem. But if you install third-party packages and tools, like let's say a linting package, you never know what this tool might do under the hood. It's written in Node.js and it could do anything on your computer. So you're relying on the maintainers of that project to make sure that nothing harmful enters their package and that they themselves don't write any harmful code in there. Well, with Deno, you control which permissions you give to your scripts when you execute them. And by default, there are no permissions. Now here we need network access and therefore we actually need to run this by adding an extra flag here, which is the allow net flag for allowing network access. Now this script, denots, still would not be able to write or read to or from our file system, but it will be able to spin up that development server. And I should put that flag first, of course, like this. So now you see this does not crash. And if I now reload here, we see message from Deno. And this is Deno. It's an alternative to Node.js. It's very, very immature. It's very new. It will have bugs. It is worth pointing out that the Deno team promised to maintain a stable API in Deno. That means that now with version 1.0, the general API should not change every few days. On the other hand, they also make it very clear that there still are a bunch of unstable features, simply features that are not fully finished or finalized yet. And therefore, Deno, of course, is not in the form or is not in the shape it will be in, let's say, a year from now. But that's pretty much the case for all technologies out there, I guess. Nonetheless, Deno definitely might not be the right choice for everyone right now yet as the team itself also clearly states here, simply because it's so new and there still will be a lot of development on Deno. It's definitely stable. It has been in development for two years now, but it will also certainly continue to evolve and grow. It is also worth mentioning that Deno is currently not compatible with NPM packages. And that's of course a big bummer. Now that might also change over time and we'll see more and more third party libraries being released for Deno over time. I'm sure that this will be the case, but at the moment it is what it is. And therefore you will not have the same ecosystem for Deno as you currently have it for Node.js. With all that summed up, Deno might still be nice to dive in right now to play around with it, to start building some side projects and to simply experiment with it. As I mentioned initially at the beginning of the video, Node.js is not going anywhere. Node.js has been around for such a long time. It has a huge ecosystem. It's striving. It's used by a lot of companies. But Deno might very well coexist and also play an important role in the future. So diving into it right now certainly is not a bad idea. Using it for all your apps right now and switching all your Node apps from Node to Deno might also not be what you want to do right now though. And with that, I hope you liked the video. This might not have been the last video on Deno. Please share your feedback below the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not part of it already and have a great day.